On today's Fit to Eat, I'll be preparing a squash pasta and vegetable medley with a side of Swiss chard and stuffed tomato. Our guest is registered dietitian Rebecca Turner, who has some helpful tips about how to sneak a green into your daily diet. We'll also take a trip to two dog farms in Flora, Mississippi to get a glimpse at just how much goes into getting these beautiful vegetables to your table. It's going to be a great show, so stay tuned. Welcome back to Fit to Eat. I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Today's guest is registered dietitian Rebecca Turner. Rebecca, welcome back to Hi, the show. Good to be back, Rob. And my goodness. Yes, our family is growing. There's a new edition coming, <laughs> new huh? New edition coming. That is fantastic. Well, today's show is going to be a really fun one. I'm going to prove that a vegetarian meal doesn't have to be tasteless. Well, then you've got your work cut out for you. I know. This is really going to be a fun one. So what we're going to do is take squash. We're going to make a little pasta. We're going to sear some greens. And we're going to create a stuffed tomato to go with it. Yum. So it's like all kinds of different flavors going on. And the first place I'm going to start is literally making this squash into pasta. Good old summer squash. Yep. And, you know, there's a ton of different units out there that can actually do this. This one, what we'll do is cut our squash. And you can use a zucchini if you don't have a squash on Yeah, that's too, right. right. And, and really, it's just a matter of whatever you, you know, enjoy. But we're going to take this, put the piece into the machine, top it. This looks like a great activity for your kids in the kitchen. I know, huh? Wouldn't it be fun? And as you see, look at it down below as it makes it into some really neat spiral pasta. It's a very visually appealing and just a different way for you to get in. Maybe a vegetable you see time in and time well, out here in Mississippi. Look at this. I've already taken the liberty. And I mean, that really looks like pasta. It does. It looks so fun and it's and gorgeous. And I mean, having a pasta restaurant, I think it's really kind of fun because we're going to use this too. But I think it shows you how simple it can be to take something that's a little different and let's pop this out so we can show people. And there it is. Very you know? pretty. Yeah, really neat. It really does look like noodles. I know. Isn't that cool? Mm-hmm. All right, so we're going to put that on the side for just a moment. Move all the rest of this over to the side. And I've taken the liberty of getting a pan kind of hot on the other side. All right. People have a hard time knowing what to do with rice, how to get it where it's really kind of correctly cooked. And the percentages of water to rice is simple, two to one. So. Let's look at the water we've got. We're going to take about a tablespoon of rice. We're going to put this in. I've never put it in a pan before. And watch what we do. Turn the heat off, cap it, and just let it sit there. Now we're going to slide that a little bit off, and it literally will cook the rice. So is it like basically steaming the rice right there on your stove yeah. top? Yeah, because a lot of people aren't sure, and they could do it in a microwave too. Okay. You know, so it makes it really nice and easy. Okay. So we've got rice that's cooked. So we're going to get to that part when we do the stuffed tomato. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and kind of start in this pan. All right. So what we have, very small amount, half of a teaspoon of oil. We do not want to add a lot of oil. We're going to throw in our julienne sliced onions. I see you have red onions there, but when I'm shopping, can I pick white, yellow, or Absolutely. does red have a special taste? Absolutely. And you know why I put them in first? And we're going to make a neat little variety with the carrots and the onion. This is firmer and will take a little bit longer to cook. Mm -hmm. So we're going to throw that in and then toss in our garlic. And I tell you, you know, this is such a flavorful dish. To me, if you're cooking vegetables, that's the key. you got to have flavor. And then the different colors, too, also provides different nutrition. We're going to make it really pretty. All right. Cracked black pepper, just to give it a little bit of spice. Now, I've noticed no salt, Rob. I have never in eight years used salt on the show. And Which that's means the truth. you can make healthy food taste delicious without, without, having, salt. without salt. And and honestly, that is so true, and people really don't get that. They no. really don't. I you mean, need to know the connection to 
having foods that are high in salt leads to high blood pressure, which can be a silent killer. Now, I'm adding some, some uniqueness in this. These are radishes that are sliced kind of silver dollar shape. Chopped tomatoes. I don't know if I've ever thought about cooking my radishes. I usually just chop Ooh, them up in a fresh so garden good. salad. They're so good because they give it a little kind of peppery flavor too. So this has got some great flavors. And then green beans. So you've got all kinds. And like you said, herein lies kind of the fun of it, that you got these beautiful colors going on. Try and gently just kind of toss it around. This guy's trying to escape. And I tell you, I think when you really look at it, it's appealing to the eye, so you know it'll be well, appealing. Well, you eat with your eyes first. You may not recognize that you do that, but when you look at something and you see how beautiful it looks, you're going to be more likely to try it. Absolutely. Kids, too. I know. Well, we're going to keep cooking this a little bit. And I tell you what, I'm going to have you get a little bit of water, if sure. you would. Because we're going to use the water. Now, everybody hears this fancy schmancy word, deglazing your pan. Deglazing your pan is nothing more than adding liquid. It can be wine, it can be water, so that it takes and it will both help steam the vegetables and get the flavor that's on the pan itself into the dish. So we're going to add a little bit around the edge periodically as we go. And to keep your dish heart healthy, don't ever add extra oil because that adds extra fat, extra And calories. I watch people do it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's a really good point. Now we can turn the heat up a little bit on this because at some point what we're going to do is take in this back pan we're gonna add just a touch more oil. We're gonna do the pasta and then have these ready to actually plate later in the show. But I wanna try and talk about a little bit of the blending. And you know, it's just amazing how accessible in great vegetables are. In Mississippi, you have vegetables that are abundant in all different places. I know, isn't it neat too? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I hear people tell me, especially in our restaurants, you know, well, where do you get these? We buy 90% of what we get from this state. People have no idea what a great resource Mississippi is. And that's something I think that's really important for people to know. All right, as we get that kind of going, I'm going to add a little bit more water. And Rob, this actually looks like a meal in of itself. I mean, when you take these recipes from Fit to Eat, you can break them down and use them how you want them. Absolutely. And by the time we take this, put it onto the pasta of sorts, mm -hmm. it's going to be really good. So we're going to take just another a half a teaspoon. So not much oil at all. When you're using oil on top of a hot pan like this, is there a particular type of oil that from your perspective works it, better? You know what, honestly, either olive oil, and mm -hmm. it does not, please guys understand this, you do not need to go spend money on extra virgin olive oil and the viscosity, that oil will burn. Just natural olive oil or canola oil okay. are the best. And, and you don't need a lot, you know, you gotta think about it. In a tablespoon, there's 12 grams of fat exactly. in oil. So we're talking about a half of a teaspoon, and we're not going to even use it all. It won't all be in the food. That's the good part about it. You can save your extra virgin olive oils for your salad dressings and drizzling on top. That's right. And, and that's really all it should be used for. Little touch of pepper. And now we're going to throw the squash in. Our squash oodles. I know. Isn't that cool? They're just so pretty. I know. Moving them around in the pan. And these, I don't like to cook too much. So we got kind of bit, quite a bit right there. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, look at when that goes on top of this pasta, it's really going to be great. To me, this pasta also is just a great trick to add to any side dish during the weeknight because I think your kids are going to be more likely to eat squash when it looks like something fun. And I'm going to ask you yep. to get me just a little bit more water there. Because the thing with this, and this is what I try to tell people, if you'll throw just a little touch in there, we're going to, yeah, you see how that, isn't that amazing? And these, these are actually at a really good point. You know how you can tell the green beans are getting a little bit limp, the carrots will get easier to chew, and by the time this pasta, which really only takes a couple minutes, is through, Oh, that was quick, Rob. I know, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Watch, toss it around. And now it actually starts to look like pasta. <laughs> isn't it crazy? And the worst thing you want to do, though, is cook your vegetables to mush. No, you absolutely don't. Totally done here. So we're going to slide this pan in the middle because it is actually done. Then we'll focus back here. Oh, I tell you what. 
I wish people could get the aroma too. Oh, you know? one day we'll have smell a vision. I know. I feel like it's I know. coming. Well, we did some julienne. I'm going to actually take the time right now because we can turn the heat down on both. I want to show people a little trick. So, an onion. People constantly ask me in the restaurant, Rob, I see you on TV. How do you do that? You've got the julienne onion. Well, it's simple. Slice off both ends of the onion. All right, then take it and cut it in half. Once you've got it cut in half, it's very easy to peel off that layer of skin. And you want that because nobody wants to eat that. Now you've got it in half, mm -hmm. face down. Take your knife, and it should be a sharp knife, but just be careful with it. And literally, just slice it from the side, as thin or thick as you like. And then I turn it and start again. And the key here, if you notice my knuckles, my knuckles are the barrier so it doesn't get near my fingertips. My fingertips are turned in. That's very important for safety. Yeah, and, and those last cuts are the ones. But look how simple that was. That was very simple. You know, and I easy. think that anybody at home can do that. And that's what I kind of beseech people to do out there is to take time, learn how to do this because you can do this ahead. Put it in, you know, like a freezer, reclosable mm -hmm. bag, and keep these in your kitchen so you have them when you want to cook, and then you can cook this fast. Very fast. But I tell you what, we're getting close here, so let's take one last okay. look here. So I think phase one has come to a really good point. Look how nice and fresh those veggies still look, and you see they're kind of limp. That's the idea. So those are done. Our pasta Excellent. is done. So I think this would be a great time to mention, go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat to find the full recipe for everything here, as well as some more information on what we've been talking about today. We're going to take a short break and visit two dog farms in Flora, Mississippi, where you can find almost all of the ingredients we've been using today. We'll also learn a little bit about how Community Supported Agriculture's CSA can help support farms and farmers alike. Take a look. Two Dog Farm started, it was just Dorothy and I doing most of it ourselves. Um, and we first started at the farmer's market. And then we started researching the idea of a CSA. CSA is community supported agriculture. With the CSA, you get a box of vegetables weekly and it changes seasonally also throughout um, the growing seasons. Every week, whenever different varieties are becoming mature in the field, then we will harvest and uh, it's always something different in your box. At the beginning of the week, we do like a crop walk on Sunday afternoon and make the list at the beginning of the week, kind of our harvest list, and that determines what's going to go in the CSA box. Of course, locally, you're going to be getting the best quality food that you can get. Um, you know where it's coming from. Uh, a lot of people like the idea of bringing home fresh vegetables to their families. The main reason is, you know, they want to, they want to eat local, they want to eat seasonal, they want to know who grows their food. In advance, we try to plan it as much as we can, but um, you know, with weather and, and other factors, you plan up, doesn't always go as you want it to. To our CSA, which is comparable to like a stock because it's a risky business. Of course, Mother Nature is our boss, so we have no idea what's gonna happen in the future while we're farming. Um, in the spring, we had to delay the season about two or three weeks because of a storm that came through. It turned and came right over the farm, tore this greenhouse down, tore a bunch of trees down, just blew debris everywhere. Yeah, it was devastating. It was heartbreaking just to see that our greenhouse would be totally wiped out and knowing that we would just have to start completely over. We lost a lot of our early, like, summer crops, a lot of our peppers and tomatoes. We had to start over with those plants we can not guarantee people are going to get everything, but take the risk with us. Our supporters are people who understand that and they 
are okay with taking that risk uh, as long as they're supporting their local agriculture and local uh, farmer because we're family. A couple weeks later, we just got flooded with emails and uh, messages on Facebook and Instagram and things like that. People wanting to help any way they can and you know, we appreciated that. Uh, definitely feels like a community when you're involved with that many people that you, you know, you become friends with them. Welcome back to Fit to Eat. All right, Rebecca, are you ready? It's smelling delicious in here. I'm telling you. Well, I've got a pan hot there because we're going to do the makings of the stuffed tomato. But I can tell you, all right, so we have one beautiful stuffed tomato right here. I mean, actually a hollowed out tomato for the stuffing. I would be willing to bet that most people out there would not have an idea of I how to do this. I would probably skip this part at home, too, not knowing no, how to No, 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 no. Can't do that. All right, so one nice tomato, ripe, okay. okay, and a paring knife. So this is the only tricky part. So you start near the edge, and I'm going to kind of show everybody there. As you do it, you're turning the tomato slowly, and you just keep turning the tomato until that line matches up here, okay? And then literally what we're going to do is cut down into it a little bit deeper so we're through and this lid will come right off. Okay. Look at that, little top. And then from this point on what I'm going to do is get an actual small plate. Set it over here on the side cuz it's going to get juicy. And then we'll cut down through and around and I tell you what I watched him do one time in our restaurant was take a spoon. So if you watch I'm going to take this small That's spoon me. and then literally you can just kind of pull the inside out. And once you have it to this point, you can kind of scoop it down to the point where it looks just like this. You got a little cup for all your vegetables. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. So I'm going to ask you just to go yes. set this in the oven. Can do that. We've got the oven set and it's only going to stay in there for a few minutes. If you just put it on the top and I will be the one to come out and get it out of there. I do not want you to take a chance of burning your hand. Let's move this over to the side. And again, one half teaspoon of oil, very hot pan you can see. Chopped turnips. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Because those kind of like onions. Green yeah. onions. Let's turn that heat down a little bit. And I'm going to have you get a little bit of water again. Can do that. Chopped celery. Fresh garlic. And again, if you guys want these recipes, you can go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat and get all the recipes. So I know it's a lot of ingredients and it comes at them quickly in the audience. So now we've got this. A little bit of black pepper and again, no, no salt. Salt's no not salt. needed to make no, the no, food no. taste good. We do not want salt. And you don't need salt. All right, so now we'll take this and look at how it's already starting to brown. Mm -hmm. You get a great aroma from it already. Mm -hmm. It's so pretty too. I know, isn't that great? And now we'll go back and do what we were doing. So remember, you're, you want to use water or vinegar or yep. wine. Never add more oil. Okay, and I think I've got time. I'm going to do something really quick just to help people here. All right. You mentioned a turnip. A turnip. Okay, this is what a turnip looks like for those of you out there who've never seen a fresh one. Or you've seen it in the grocery store yeah, and didn't know right. what to do with it. Right, Same, almost identical as what we did with the onion. Cut off each end, all right, and then cut it in half. It's always easier to work with something when it's cut in half. Slice it. All right, now don't try to do the whole stack at a time. Two at a time. We're going to come across, cut it once, and then... And I know you're cooking them for this squash pasta recipe, Rob, but they're also delicious raw with your favorite oh, vegetable. Uh, I love them. I could eat them any way you want to do them. But that's how simple it really is. So, I mean, I think people need to get used to how simple it is to work with fresh vegetables as opposed to frozen or canned. And I never use either of the above. I mean, I think it's so nice to have fresh product. It's all I use in the restaurants and it's all you really need. So let's toss this around. Now I'm going to ask you to take some of that cooked brown rice that we did over in the pan Throw two tablespoons in, which two. is ultimately, yep, and that's all we need. Need to hear? Right into the pan, yep. And that's actually what one, ta one tablespoon will double in volume. So now we've actually created the perfect stuffing for the tomato. 
and I think this is gonna be really good. We gotta let it cook a little bit more, and I'm gonna have you get just a little bit more water, I think, after I put this in there. And when you choose brown rice over white, you're adding fiber, which is gonna help fill you up and not fill you out. And, and I tell you what, it, it tastes just as good. I think it tastes better, actually. And again, you can go to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. You're never going to remember all of this, I promise you, but all the recipes are there. Easy to print off. And again, too, use the recipes, break them apart if you need to, because I can see multiple dishes out of this one. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to let you have a little fun. Yes. Toss a little of this basil over on the vegetables on the far right. And then if you'll just, yep, and if you'll just kind of stir that in. I can do and, that. and here's the good question people will ask. Why didn't we put them in earlier? Because basil will blacken oh. if it's overly heated. But the flavor of basil and the sweetness of it, I love. And it's and easy to grow in your own backyard. Now, you can cook it in a sauce, but realize it's only going to impart the flavor more that way. But you don't have that real sweet flavor. I love to do it at the very end. It looks good, it mm -hmm. tastes good, and it makes for a really fun addition. So now we've got all of that going on that is going to go on top of our pasta, nice and healthy. We've got our stuffing, and I'm guessing, and I think I'm going to be the one who does the honor right now. <laughs> I promise you I wouldn't make you grab this out, but we don't want it in there too long. And that's all it takes. Look at that. Is it just softening it so you yep. can cut it with a fork? Yeah, and you, you want it to stay firm enough that it keeps its shape. So it's a little tricky. Now, this is in a hot... A uh, little container, I mean, call it a casserole dish. Whatever you have at home will work. You don't have to have something that looks that little, that cute look, you know? Yes. Anything will. So, all right. So now, throughout the season, Rebecca Turner will give you some helpful tips on how to eat well. Rebecca, what do you have for us today? One perk to participating in a community-supported agricultural program, or CSA, is getting locally grown leafy greens. Greens of all varieties, especially those dark leafy ones, they're high in fiber and they're packed full of good for you vitamins and minerals. Getting a daily dose of dark greens offers numerous health benefits for your heart, your mind, and your immune system. But not everyone is a fan. So sneak greens into your everyday routine by slipping spinach into your smoothie. Now trust me, when you blend a handful of spinach with your favorite fruit or yogurt, you will reap all the health benefits without even noticing any of the taste. Or you can try sauteing them into your eggs. You can add sauteed turnips, greens, kale, or spinach into your egg scramble, mix them in your omelets, bake them in a frittata, and you're gonna have a protein and veggie filled meal. Now, here's a bonus tip. Massage kale before eating to help break down the tough cell structure and give your kale a soft texture and a gentler flavor. Just hit a bowl of kale with a pinch of salt and a squeeze of lemon or even a splash of vinegar and then like it sounds, just start crunching them between your hands. But just for a few minutes, you don't wanna overdo it and you're gonna have a bowl of kale that's much nicer to eat. Now, if you use these tips, your daily greens will be fit to eat. All right. Well, I tell you what, let's take a good look at where we're going to go with this. A little more oil. And now, my favorite. And you see onions are in quite a bit of this recipe. So this is the Swiss chard. And guys, Swiss chard is a, is a green that's so pretty. If we can see, I mean, look how pretty those leaves are. The pan is really hot. We're adding a little garlic and onion, throwing some water in the pan, and then we throw the greens right on <laughs> I top. I can do that. <laughs> I think you can do this, huh? Yes. This is one really easy dish. So while we're doing that, though, I've already taken the liberty of moving our tomato over, and now we just take and we stuff it with the leftover. And you're going to notice I left a little bit extra here, mm -hmm. so at some point you can sample that delicious little flavoring. You don't have to pull my arm. I know, huh? And now let's take this, and I don't cook these long at all, because I want it to stay just beautiful, fresh, and green. And you see how thin they are, and how it really is just a light flake. 
So, Rob, so, if I can't find Swiss chard in my grocery store at my farmer's market, because maybe it's not in season, what can I substitute that with? I mean, I came prepared in case I couldn't with some turnip greens as well. Any large bitter green works just fine. So it's really simple not to have to worry. All right. And now, let's see. Oh, that's pretty. I know, huh? We're going to take it. So let's get this bottle out of the way so you can see what we're doing here. And again, there's some extra in here. We're going to put it right on top of that pasta. Look at all that, huh? Mm-hmm. Tell me that's not now beautiful. Now, you should be aiming for about eight to ten servings of vegetable daily for yeah. better health. Really? I yeah. bet we hit three to four in this, in one, this one meal. meal. You'd be halfway there. And this is really simple because I don't like to overcook them again. This is kind of like grilled onions over this. And I tell you what, I mean, when you really look at this mm -hmm. pretty dish, let's set this in front for just a second. All right, so we've got now our stuffed tomato, our squash pasta, all the beautiful toppings, and those turnip greens. And I mean, I think that this really came out nice right now. Look, well, we are getting close to being out of time, but I think everything really did turn out great. I want to thank Rebecca Turner for joining us today. And if you want to learn more about anything you've seen in this episode, then head over to mpbonline.org slash fit to eat. And don't forget to follow and like our Facebook page. Until next time, I'm your host, Rob Stinson. Eat well. <laughs>